YouTube, YouTube, welcome to week number two of how to cycle a saltwater tank. Now today's video is going to be relatively shorter than the last one, only because there's a little bit less information to go over. Because at this point, you have to exercise the number one rule of saltwater aquarium keeping, and that is patience. This is the part of the cycling process where things are really, really starting to be exciting. You're starting to see some diatoms die off, some colors are forming on your rocks, and you think to yourself, my tank possibly has cycled. So I'm gonna test out my water. My ammonia came out to zero, my nitrate came out to zero, and my phosphates came out to zero. Which means that evidently, my tank has cycled. Wrong. This is where I'm telling you, do not make this mistake. This is the part of the cycling process that I call the valley. Let me show you and let me explain. I'm halfway through week number two, which means that I'm maybe, you know, 18 days into my cycling process or so. And I'm in between a spike of nitrate and I've lost the majority of my diatoms. So just to review, week number one, we did the water, we did the live rocks and we've introduced sand. And we saw a spike in ammonia and nitrite and possibly even some nitrate where we've seen some diatoms. Now, if you look at my tank, the diatoms are gone. I have no more diatoms. However, I have a little bit of green hair algae. And I say a little bit because it's actually less than what it was this morning and what it was last night. However, the, the confusing part is that I've tested my water. I'm at zero ammonia, I'm at zero nitrate, and I'm at zero phosphate. So why am I seeing some green hair algae? That is because the nitrate, the ammonia, the phosphate is actually being eaten by the green hair algae. It's residing inside the actual algae, which means that when the algae starts to die off because it has nothing else to feed on, it will spike a nitrate cycle. Not so much a cycle, but it will spike nitrate. And once my nitrate spikes, this is what I'm gonna do. This is where I'm going to introduce my first water change. I'm going to reduce my nitrate by doing a water change. I'm gonna introduce fresh salt water in my aquarium, in my system, reducing my nitrate. And I'm gonna do that week three. And I'm also gonna do it week four. I'm gonna do another 5% water change. And this is where I'm actually going to introduce a cleanup crew. This is where I'm gonna have my snails, a couple of hermits, but I'm gonna keep them hardy. I'm not gonna introduce starfish or anything that's very, very sensitive. Um, so this is what I recommend that you do. So once you test your water two weeks into it, but you see that you have a couple of small, you, you know, algae growths um, in different areas, on different rocks, this is what you do. If you think that you've cycled your tank at this point, keep testing your water for the next week. Don't introduce life, keep testing your water. And if you test out zero ammonia, zero nitrate, and zero phosphates, for the next seven days, then yes, you have cycled your tank and you have to do your first water change. And then once you do your first water change, I recommend that you again test out. So even at this point, guys, you're still two weeks away from introducing any sort of life. And I know that there's gonna be comments out there, they're gonna say, I've cycled my tank in five days, I've introduced, you know, BioAspire, um, different bio, uh, you know, chemicals that help me cycle the tank so much quicker and quickly. I'm not saying that you cannot have fish and you cannot have corals and invertebrates. What I'm saying is that the life on your rocks hasn't been established fully yet and this is what you want because in video number one I talk about how your rock your live rock is your primary source of filtration so why introduce things into your aquarium into your system when your filtration process isn't ready to handle it yet so I recommend that you test out your water for the next week do your first water change and then your second week after that continue testing your water then start introducing life be patient. It should be at least a good four weeks before you start introducing any sort of life when you're starting out a saltwater tank that's going to be reef ready and fish ready. 
So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to talk about. I'm going to release some videos in the future, um, probably in the next week or so, as to um, my thought process of aquascaping. A lot of people make mistakes when they aquascape. They don't see the damages that it actually brings to your tank. And then two or three months down the road, it's having all sorts of uh, issues. And, and it's actually all due to the simple solution or the simple problem or the simple fact um, that you've placed your rocks and your circulation badly in your tank. And it's affecting your entire system. So I'm going to talk about that probably in the next week or so. I'm going to do a video uh, just on aquascaping and circulation. So stay tuned and watch out for that. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day.